Okay, I got a folder with a bunch of different files and it's not organized at all. I got different type of images, zip files, video files, Excel files and the lots of others. And I'm going to organize these files by the file types using Excel. I simply open up a blank Excel sheet, I go to the data tab, I hit get data, from file and from folder. Using the file browser, I'm just selecting the folder where I have the mess, hit open and transform data. The query read it the content of the folder and it since automatically pulled the extension, I don't really need anything else. But if you look at the content column, then you can actually see the binary content for the computer files. And if I scroll right, then I can see the metadata as well related to each computer file. But now I go to the home tab, I hit choose columns, and I'm going to choose the name, the extension, and the folder pass column. Then I hit OK. Everything is formatted as a text, that's fine. Then I go back to the home tab, close, close and load too. Then I simply just insert as a table, on the existing worksheet, hit OK. And here we go. I got a table with the list of the files I have in that specific folder. I close the pane, and now I'm going to use a very simple trick to create folders where I'm going to move my existing files to make it organized. I selected the table, I hit data, I open up the query pane, right click, hit edit. I'm going to just simply duplicate the query table I created and I'm going to modify the applied steps. So I go to the applied steps and I hit the gear icon at the removed other columns and that was basically the choose columns function. And in this case I will only need the extension column. I hit OK, then I select the column and on the home tab I choose remove rows, remove duplicates and here we go. I got the unique values. But it's not enough because I don't want to have that dot before the extension since I'm gonna create folders to move my files into. So what I do, I go to the transform tab and I hit split column by delimiter. It's gonna be custom and the delimiter is the dot. Then I simply just hit OK. Once it's done, I can remove the column that includes the dots and only a column remain with the extension names. I double click on the header and I simply rename it as folder list. I hit enter. I'm going to also name my query. Hit enter. I go to the home tab, close, close and load too. And this time I'm going to insert on a new worksheet. I'm done. I simply select the values, copy it. I select another cell right click, hit paste special, from there I need only the values and I'm gonna transpose the values, hit ok. Once I got the horizontally pasted data on the sheet, I simply copy it, I open up a blank notepad and I simply just enter md, which means make directory, space and then I can paste the list of the values. Then I hit file, save as, I'm going to navigate to the folder where I want to create those subfolders and this is gonna be here. And I'm going to name my file as organize.bat, like a bad file. The encoding should be the ANCI and simply save it. Then I can close the notepad, hit escape, then I open up my file browser. As you see, I have this system file created. What I do, I simply select and I double click on it. And the system will generate me those subfolders. Then I simply just right click on one of the folder, I hit properties and I copy the location. Then I hit OK and I can head back to my Excel. I'm going to just place the value somewhere here for now and I go back to my master table. I zoom out a little bit. I also remove the dots from here. I simply select the column B, Ctrl F, replace the dots with nothing. Hit replace all. Then I hit OK. Close. And I'm going to create the new folder path. New folder path. Done. And my new folder path will look like this. Equal sign list folder. I need this value. Ampersand. Double quotes. Backslash. Double quotes. Ampersand. I go back to my main sheet and I select the extension type which is going to be my folder name. And I simply just add one more backslash to my text. Then I hit enter. The only thing is missing to fix the value. I'm going to select the C file because that's where the new the path name is coming from. And using the F4 I simply just fix the value. Then I hit enter. And if I scroll to the left I can see the actual file name as well. And in order to move a file, the Windows has to know exactly the file name and pathway if I want the Windows to interact with the file. So what I do, I simply just scroll to the right and I'm going to add two more columns. One is the source file, the second one is the 
destination file and it's gonna be very easy equals sign the original pathway ampersand and the value from the name column then hit enter now i got the pathway of the original file now let's create the pathway for the destination file so basically the new pathway for the existing file and it will look like this equal sign the value from the new folder path column ampersand and the file name hit enter so basically i want to move these files from this folder into this new folder and the last thing i'm going to do is just to create a very simple macro and you will find the code in the description as well as the sample file link to download. So what I do, I simply hit Alt F11. It opens up the Visual Basic Editor. I go to the Insert tab, I hit Module, and I'm going to name my macro like this, Sub, Organize, open brackets, angle brackets, hit enter, done. And now I will need to activate a library, a reference library in the Visual Basic. I hit the Tools tab and I hit References. I scroll down until I find the reference called Microsoft Scripting Runtime. It's very easy to find because everything is in an alphabetical order from A to Z. Once I select it, I simply just hit OK. And the visual basic code I need, it will look like this. So I'm using the previously selected references to interact with the Windows objects. If you are not familiar with the visual basic, don't worry, you just simply copy paste the code into the visual basic editor and you are done. But what it does basically, it sets the file system object to work with, then I declare some variables which is going to be my source file, the destination file, and I'm using another variable to start counting the number of rows in my table. Since the first row on the table is the header, so I need to start checking the values from the second row. And the do until loop will basically go through on each row to check the fifth column, which includes the source destination file name, and if it's blank then it stops working and in the meanwhile the source variable will be equal with the value from the fifth column which is the pathway of the original file i want to move into a new folder and the destination variable equals with the value from the sixth column which is basically the new pathway for the existing files the rest is just a simple if statement if the file exists then please move it from the source destination to the final destination. If something is not found, then I will get an error message. Once it's done, it will go to the next row. Once it's finished with the entire process, it will give me back a message saying I'm done. Let's give it a try. So I close the Visual Basic Editor. As I said, the fifth column is the source file, the sixth is the destination file. I open up the file browser. As you see, the CSV folder is empty, PDF is empty, and I want to move every file from this not organized folder into those subfolders. So I go back to my Excel, I simply hit Alt F8 and I hit Run to make my macro working. And it was very fast. The process is done. I simply just hit OK. I go back to my file browser and as you see, all the files disappeared from the not organized folder. And if I go back and I select the subfolders I created with the bad file, CSV files moved into the proper folder. Let's check the PNG folder. Here we go, I got the images there. PDF folder, beautiful, as well as the link files are moved too. If I check the zip folder, I have only just zip files saved there. Let me know in the comment if it was useful for you and you want to know more tips and tricks like this. 